On the broader matter, I would simply say that President Maduro needs to focus on addressing the legitimate grievances of the Venezuelan people through meaningful dialogue with them, uh, not through dialogue with the United States. Despite what the Venezuelan government would like to lead people to believe, this is not a U.S.-Venezuela issue. It is an issue between Venezuela and its people. We've been clear all along that the future of Venezuela is for the Venezuelan people to decide. Is that it? Is that the most the White House will say? It won't take sides between good and evil, between peaceful democratic protesters and violent responses from the Chavistas. Is America really pulling out of the world and leaving a void, a void to be filled by whom? Well, in the case of Venezuela, look at these photos of Cuban military aircraft landing in Caracas, disgorging hundreds of Cuban soldiers on, quote, exercises. This is happening in real time, people. And look at this picture. This is a picture taken on social media of a soldier who's brutally putting down protesters. But Miami exiles from Cuba in Miami have recognized this person as a Cuban thug from the streets of Castro's Cuba imported to Venezuela to help put down the protest. Well, joining me now to talk about the nature of the fight in Venezuela and Obama's equality, his neutrality, is our friend Leopoldo Martinez. You remember him from last week. He's a former Venezuelan congressman, and he joins us from Washington. Mr. Martinez, welcome back to the show. Am I overstating the Cuban influence in Venezuela? These military exercises, surely they're not a coincidence. And what do you make of the rumors that Cubans are actually wearing Venezuelan uniforms in Caracas to help put down the protests through violence? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here and follow up on the events. I, I think that uh, the Cubans themselves and the Venezuelan government itself, Nicolas Maduro on his own words and Raul Castro on his own words, have made it clear uh, to not only the Venezuelans but the Americas that they have an alliance and that Cuba intervenes, interferes, and is permanently consulted by Nicolas Maduro. And in the past, you remember the role that the government of Cuba played, uh, not only during the Chavez years, but also during his illness. So uh, they have not done any effort to make this non-visible. They want the world and they want the Americas to know that this is one single uh, project, that they're together in this. How far does it go? It could go very far because there is inte Cuban intelligence presence in Venezuela in numbers that are significant. Remember that uh, Venezuela entered, and it was me while in Congress that won the first one who, who opposed to the terms of that cooperation agreement. Uh, Cuba and Venezuela entered under Chavez a new version of a long-standing cooperation that Venezuela has had with Cuba. Remember that the Cuba-Venezuela relation went from bad terms to good terms in the 70s. And uh, uh, during uh, almost uh, 20 years, Venezuela had a good relation with Cuba. But the cooperation that Chavez promoted and that Maduro embraces is one where Venezuela delivers 100,000 barrels of oil per day to Cuba, which are not paid by Cuba in cash. And in return, Venezuela accepts services from the Cuban government. Like putting they down have protests over with over 25 soldiers. years to pay that uh, invoice. Mm. Uh, Congressman, uh, here's what's incredible to me. At the very same time, you see democratic grassroots activity in Venezuela and in Ukraine. And yet the world's media is focused on Ukraine. Oh, President Obama has warned Russia about not sending troops to intervene in Ukraine. Why has the world's media given less attention to Venezuela? And why has Obama been so neutral? You heard the words of Jay Carney at the top of our segment. He said, oh, this is for Venezuelans. You know, you should consult. But he didn't take sides. Why the difference between Ukraine and Venezuela? Well, I guess there is uh, an Eurocentric uh, foreign policy vision that dominates the agenda in the U.S. 
but there is significant, uh, uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't say the level of attention I think it deserves, but there is some attention, uh, and I would say significant attention, particularly to the te details, from some in, in, in the Americas. Uh, let, me, let me try to contextualize some of the events. Uh, during these days of repression, the Maduro government has uh, voiced, uh, Maduro himself said this, that the U.S. is behind the protests and that the U.S. is behind a, an economic conspiracy against Venezuela that explains the, the uh, evils that the Venezuelans are suffering on a daily basis because of the failure of their economic model. They keep blaming the U.S. for that. And I think the U.S. has taken a strategic stance in, in, in trying to lead from behind. Uh, uh, during the days of the repression, the, um, the, um, the situation came to a point in which Maduro pointed his finger to three members of the consulate in Venezuela, the U.S. consulate in Venezuela. We don't have ambassadors today. We only have a relation that is standing on, on very precarious grounds. Uh, between the U.S. and Venezuela, and they expelled three officials of the U.S. Embassy and the consulate, accusing them to be part of the organization of these demonstrations. Uh, in retaliation to that, the U.S. normally does the same. They did it in the past when this happened a few months ago. We were expecting this to happen. But the hypocrisy and the uh, irony with which, and the cynicism with which the Venezuelan government handles this, uh, prompted them to promote the designation of an ambassador. During this repression, and after they had expelled the three officials from the U.S. Embassy out of Venezuelan soil. Congressman, I've so, got to cut you off there. I'm afraid we're, we're almost out of time. I'd love to keep in touch with you in the weeks ahead. It's so important that the light of public scrutiny be shone on Venezuela. And I want you to know that the people of Canada stand with you, democracy, peace, and freedom. Keep up the fight, my friend. I, we will, and it's very important that Canada be present in the future events that, we'll going, do our that are best. going to take place in the OAS, uh, making a voice We've got to go, Congressman. We'll keep in touch.